Hi there! I'm a Canadian Girl Guide and I can hardly believe we're celebrating our 100th anniversary. It sure seems like we've come a long way in the past 100 years, but really, the spirit of guiding hasn't changed very much at all. Let's take a look at some of the things that have happened over those years. Just one year after Girl Guides began in England as an offshoot of the newly formed Boy Scouts organization, we started up here in Canada. It was in 1910 in St. Catharines, Ontario, that Mary Malcolmson launched our very first company. Girls in Canada couldn't wait to join, and within two years we were in every province and we had our first Chief Commissioner, Lady Mary Pellet. You might recognize her home in Toronto at the time, Casa Loma. In fact, the guiding spirit lives on there to this day, and thousands of us gathered there this year and visited the permanent Girl Guides exhibits. Camping has always been a big part of guiding. Check this out. This photo was taken at one of our first guide camps in Canada. This one was in 1913, right on the banks of the Credit River outside of Toronto. Can you believe what we had to wear back then? What those girls wouldn't have given for a pair of jeans. Younger girls were taking part in guiding these years, originally called Rosebuds, and then in 1919, brownie packs were given official standing in Canada. Girl Guides helps me and every other guide be more independent and ready to face the challenges of life, and that's been put to the test many times in our history. When World War I began, a dark cloud fell over millions of lives. And in this time of great need, Girl Guides lived up to their promise of loyalty and service, both here at home and abroad, supporting soldiers and civilian efforts, and in doing so, we truly discovered the strength we had within to change the world around us. Guiding in Canada grew quickly during the Great Depression. Economic hardships didn't stop us girls from experiencing the friendship, adventures, and opportunity to grow into strong, independent women that guiding offered. Of course, camping continued to be an important part of guiding in Canada, and one of our camps back then had a barn, and we needed a horse. So we came up with a fundraiser to pay for the horse, selling cookies. Who knew how big that cookie idea would become? During World War II, girl guides around the world, including our Canadian girls, stepped up and did whatever was required, from taking first aid courses and helping families, to raising funds for two air ambulances that they donated to the war effort. I guess being a guide has always meant being committed to your family, your country, and even the world. After the war, we girl guides were swept along with the rest of Canada into a new age of opportunity and challenges. In 1953, Girl Guides of Canada expanded to numerous Canadian forces bases in Europe as companies and packs on foreign soil. Not only did girls and families stationed overseas form bonds as guides, but they also helped spread the good word about guiding to other countries. We hosted the World Camp in 1957 as part of the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the birth of Lord baden Powell, the founder of Boy Scouts and Girl Guides. Guides from 37 different countries gathered here in Canada to share common experiences in different cultures. Guiding truly is a worldwide connection. We're part of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, also known as WAGS. And with 145 other countries involved, it's the largest voluntary organization for us girls and women in the world. At home here in Canada, we built our own national headquarters in Toronto at 50 Merton Street, raising money by selling square inches at 10 cents each to our members and friends. We moved into our beautiful new building in 1962, and before the end of the decade, we added a third floor. As guiding in Canada continued to gain momentum, we celebrated some very big birthdays. 1960 was our Golden Jubilee year, and we held a big national party for our Diamond Jubilee in 1970. Guiding in Canada has always been evolving, offering different programs for girls of different ages. In 1971, the Rangers program combined other senior branches programs including Air Rangers and Sea Rangers. Some of those had been around since the 20s. Pathfinders began in 1979, providing girls aged 12 to 15 their own distinct program. Our guiding family also included junior leaders, cadets, loans, guiding for members with special needs, and our trefoil guild. Oh, and in 89, we welcomed our newest members, our five and six-year-old Sparks with their bright pink t-shirts. We sure have changed a lot over the past 100 years, and not just in the way we look in our uniforms. No matter what kind of programs and activities Girl Guides has offered since we began, we've always remained focused on preparing girls and women to be strong, resourceful, and respectful members of their communities. And whether we have been camping, lending a hand during wartime years, or working to better the lives of others in our neighborhoods, 
As Girl Guides, we have always formed bonds that fulfill and strengthen us as girls and women. And so, for 100 years now, we guides in Canada have made a difference to ourselves, to society, and to our ever-changing world. It makes for quite a story so far, doesn't it? If you're like me, I'll bet you just can't wait to see what happens next.